Welcome back to the greenhouse today, everyone. Today we are discussing methane. I'm just gonna set this up here for right now. We will get into the process of creating and burning methane. Growing up in the Western world, we're taught from an early age that all waste is bad and it must be discarded basically at all costs. We've got huge landfills, we've got very poor recycling systems, and we could be using and capturing all of the energy that's created from waste and turning it into a usable source of fuel, which there is a lot of methane recovery, especially in landfills and like pig farms and things like that. But at home, we could be doing this ourselves. I've always wanted to tap into my septic tank and I'm gonna do some more research on it before I actually do that. But I know that humans create about one cubic foot of methane per day an average grown adult. Now we do a lot of composting and aerobic composting, which is the process of using oxygen to create heat and CO2 and minor other things in a process of composting, hot composting like our compost heating system for our greenhouse. Now in an anaerobic situation, that means the absence of oxygen. Methane is produced in the absence of oxygen. So we wanna create a system ideal for creating methane, which is also produced about body temperature between 90 and 100, 105 degrees is ideal for maximum methane production. Now Jean Payne himself, Swiss born French inventor, used 50 ton piles of wood chips and decompose them and he would put barrels inside them full of all types of organic matter and water in order to create a sealed environment with the lack of oxygen, an anaerobic situation. So he was able to harvest that methane. My kids are out here riding bikes and four wheelers and stuff. It's kind of chilly out today, so they're all bundled up. Anyways, Jean Payne was able to heat his home, cook with the methane, heat water, run his generator, and he even powered his little truck he converted to methane. And on our property, we've shown hundreds of times where we waste nothing and we reuse every part of this system, but there was one element that we've struggled to achieve over the years, which is harvesting methane from the system itself. I've tried a few different ways and the massive piles, are, it's just hard to harvest. I mean, you have to bury a tube down in there deep and then just hope that it's getting forced through the tube into a small tube. I made a capture tube, I've got videos on that, but it never seemed to work. There wasn't enough pressure. There's too much gap in between all of the wood chips leading to an aerobic compost. Why we don't have to turn our 10, 12 ton piles. It just burns and burns because it's still got oxygen able to be used. So there is methane created in compost in very small pockets where oxygen is no longer present, but we don't create a whole lot of methane during the production of hot compost. So we're gonna try and go the whole nine yards and recreate 100% what Jean Payne was doing. We have our barrel out back that we were using for thermal mass. I am going to be draining a little bit of water out of it, filling it with a whole bunch of items to create methane with, and we're going to see where we get with that. I wanna run through the process of everything I've set up and what I've been doing over the last day or two to be able to harvest methane and capture it for a burn. Now, if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing. Let's get right into this. So when I say let's get right into this, I wanna talk about numbers and the equation. So we've got methane, CH4, CH4 plus two oxygen, are going to oxidize the oxidation process when you burn it and it is going to give you CO2 and two molecules of H2O, carbon dioxide and water. So the two products of burning methane with plenty of oxygen, if you don't have enough oxygen, you can create carbon monoxide and that's obviously no good. CO2 is a lot better for the planet than methane or carbon monoxide. These plants in here thrive off of CO2, so we're not going to hurt anything by burning a little methane once we get to that step here. There is an absolute enormous amount of energy to be captured from decomposition. And we capture all we can in the form of heating air, heating water, and we want to be able to capture those combustible gases that are created in the anaerobic state to be able to burn them ourselves. And we need a good carbon to nitrogen ratio. You can't just throw a whole bunch of carbonaceous matter in a tank and expect it to produce a whole lot of methane or energy from it. 
you do need a good nitrogen source, like 45% nitrogen at least with the carbon to be able to produce a good amount of methane in those anaerobic conditions. All right, so I'm done boring you guys with just me talking and not showing. I just wanted to go through all the numbers and show what we were doing. So this is our system I've rigged up here. Lots of things from that here. So I want to come out back. I got my drill in here. So we've got all of this matter that we broke apart with our wood chipper. Now I've probably got half a bucket or so. This is a decent sized bucket. Perfect for creating a hot compost system or perfect for fitting in the little mouth of our barrel there along with some wood chips. This little wood chipper here, it's actually pretty sweet. Works pretty darn well, not too loud, but it can't handle a whole lot. So like sunflower stalks and small branches are about as good as it's gonna get. Oh, let's jump the fence here without falling. Coming on over to our barrel here. You can see we're still pretty full of water. I wanted to show this cap. So I used a little bit of RTV, have a nut and the barb. It is a nice solid seal. So as we place tons and tons of carbonaceous matter like wood chips, we're going to drain about a quarter of this tank. So we'll take it a quarter of the way down. So it's a 55 gallon drum, pretty full. We'll probably go down to about 40 gallons or a little bit less than 40 gallons of water. Mixing wood chips with all of the green matter. I'm just gonna go ahead and place this back on so we don't get anything in our line there. No bugs crawling up in there or anything. So I'm gonna jump back over the fence. Oof. So I had to get this process done and complete and basically creating methane before we dump all of our wood chips. So we've got to get all of this in, all of our wood chips in that barrel. We've got the barrel, we've got the cap, we've got the line. Now, I just tapped into the wall of our greenhouse here, and I'm going to use caulk or a piece of rubber to seal that up nice and tight. It's a lot warmer in here. So where we came through the wall here, it's kind of curly because it was on like a 20 foot roll. So coming down, I wanted to show the system before I actually put the rest of the things together here. So. We've got a cap for a pickle jar, same thing, a nut and some RTV for sealing it up airtight and a barb, quarter inch barbs all around. Now I have a double flare. This is a barb on this side. This is a barb on this side. So where our methane's coming in, it's going to be forced all the way down this tube before it can come back up. Now this is going to be in here. But before I actually do that, I'm going to put our lye water. So we created this lye water with a bunch of wood ash. Now we leached all of the lye out of the wood ash slowly over a day and let it drip in here. So we just poured a little water with all our wood ash. Now we're going to be making DIY concrete from all of the ash that we pulled out and drained the water from. That is 100% wood ash. We're going to fire harden that and basically turn it to lime and use it for DIY concrete, just like our bricks over here, all these DIY concrete bricks that we painted. So back to the methane, we have this lye water. We're going to fill up in here because lye water is alkaline. It is a complete opposite of acid. So we are going to use this water as the methane bubbles down through it and back up and then into our system. This is going to pull any sulfates, uh, sulfur, out of the methane. So we're going to not poison ourselves and we will get a cleaner, better burn. We could have multiple filter stations to dry it and all that, but this is just a greenhouse and we are doing the basics right here. I probably should have ran a double filter, but I did not get a whole lot of all this. Most of this sat down in the bottom, all of this little bits of ash that had made it through the filter we created. So now we've got our alkaline filter system. Just got to put it together. So there we have it. Our methane will run in, bubble down, 
go through all of this on the way back up, pulling any sulfur out because it is alkaline. Sulfur is an acid, so we are going to be running that methane that bubbles through right to this T fitting here. And that T fitting, one side goes to this inner tube holding maybe two to three cubic feet of air. So you can see that we've got it tapped right into the valve stem itself. Nice good seal. I blew a little air in here just to test the system and it seems to be holding air. Now that valve stem, this is the inside of the valve stem. This is just the cap. And this is my little trick for getting valve stems out. I take a cotter pin and cut and make it nice and flush, bend it out a little bit, and then you can get into the valve stem and spin it right out. And then this little piece comes out, the plunger. And we take this plunger out because we would not be able to freely flow and have methane flow in without that plunger being pushed and it wouldn't come back out without the plunger being pushed. So now we've got a free sack that is going to inflate at will with pressure. So we've got the T fitting. One side runs to storage, the other side runs to a ball valve with a half inch and quarter inch barbs, half inch thread. So we can turn the ball valve and that is going to allow all of that pent up methane to flow right to a burner where we can control how much flame we're going to have right off this little Bunsen here. So quick overview of the system. This is exactly how you would put together a small methane burn system. And if you were using like a bag, I see people use like really thick garbage bag looking things. Instead of a tank outside, you would just run a line right from your barrel where methane's created or bag, and then you could burn it directly, but you're also going to have those sulfates and you're going to have a lot of water coming off of that. We're still going to create two molecules of water and one molecule of carbon dioxide with every molecule of methane that we burn. So it'll be interesting to see. I may end up setting this up and screwing it into a wall or something just so it doesn't put itself out as it's burning. It'll be interesting. I just want to check it out. So this is a simple DIY methane set up right here and I'm really looking forward to hopefully having success with this. So that was a very quick rundown of the whole methane capture system that I created and it only took me like a day, a day and a half. I went and bought a few pieces and parts but we've successfully put a methane system together and I'm really looking forward to filling it up and I'm really looking forward to bringing updates as this starts to produce methane. And real quick, before this video gets too darn long, I wanted to run through the accrual of animals and how much methane they can produce per day just from their dung. I'm going to be talking in BTUs, which is a British thermal unit, and that's just a unit used to measure the amount of energy. One BTU is equal to the amount of energy it takes to raise the pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. One BTU, one pound by one degree Fahrenheit. So as I said earlier, a human creates one cubic foot of methane equaling about 600 BTUs. That would be about enough to boil one kettle of water. On average, a chicken creates about a half of a cubic foot, which is about a half of a kettle of water, about 300 BTUs. Now a cow can create about eight to eight and a half cubic feet of methane per day. That equals about 4,800 BTU per day, just from one animal. And that equals about four and a half to five kettles of water being brought to a boil. Now the most production is by pigs by far. They're producing about nine, a little over nine cubic feet per day, equaling about 5,400 BTUs per day produced from one pig. And that's about five to six, a little over six kettles of water being brought to a boil. Now that's pretty interesting. I didn't realize how much methane was produced just from those animals alone because all they do is eat organic matter and reproduce it into solid waste and gas. So if anyone has any questions on anything I covered in here today, definitely drop them to me in the comments below. We're still waiting on our pond to dry up all the way. We started a fire in yesterday's video and you can see we've got a few cracks on the new spots, but 
We will be filling those cracks in and then finishing the leveling process. We've actually got a decently sunny day here. Everything looks darn good in the greenhouse. And with that, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to fill up the methanizer with a whole bunch of browns and greens, wood chips and all of that matter that we put through our wood chipper, all the green stuff from our garden. So hopefully within about seven days, we start to see some type of production because within five to seven days, we should see a little bit of methane being produced. And then after that, hopefully we can get our wood pile dumped and have a bunch of insulating heat around that tank. And we should be able to produce a decent amount of methane. Just gotta get a little bit of water out of the barrel throw everything in. So I'm gonna let you guys go. It's a little chilly out here. I'm gonna get back to work and I will see you guys in the next video.